All right. Welcome to another episode of the Archives with Adam and Fab. We have an episode today that we're bringing to you that just really, truly, it, it means so much to us. Uh, today, we have Miss Audrey Jackson, Mama Smoke, with us today. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you. Oh, of course. Of course. So we've been we've been trying to make this happen a little bit, but we finally got it happening. And yeah, I mean, we're just we know you're so busy with the foundation and, you know, just trying to keep everything rolling. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're glad we have you on today. Um, so, yeah, um, like I said, this one just hits a little different for us uh, just because, I mean, Fabi, she was a huge fan of your your son's music. Um, mm -hmm. And I've been following um, like the foundation and things like that. Um, me personally, I, I wasn't really too much into his music until unfortunately he passed away. But then that's when I was like, man, we had such a talented artist. And, um, you know, there's that's not going to be really anybody like that in in that res you know perspective um and we could chat about that a little bit more down the road but you know i want to definitely talk about your your most recent visit that you had here in seattle um fabby showed me she's like look who was here and i was like who and she showed <laughs> me and i was like man oh that would have been an honor you know but I was in and out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not really, but you know, still. Yeah. 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 Well, all you the went to the gum things. wall, you got to see all the grossness that was going on there. And <laughs> uh, you know, that that's Seattle for you. They say But I like the marketplace though. I mean that was, you know, uh, but I I overall oh, yeah. I like oh, the marketplace. Yeah. I found a nice little boutique that I don't mind going back to again. There you, you go. Know? Yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty low key, but um Obviously, we have our our problems here as well. But um, you were out here, you know, you just had that recent trip where you spoke on something obviously near and dear to you, and that's that's gun violence. Mm -hmm. um, you got to connect with Mayor Harrell, um, and obviously that's a big deal in today's society, right? You know, it's just it's happening. You know, in the music industry, it's it's happening even in the the real world. Um, how was that visit? Do you do you feel like you kind of got to got through to them and made your voice heard? Um, it was uh, it was a um, I enjoyed my visit. I'm looking for something Wednesday. <laughs> uh -huh. um, right. So it was. I had a I really I had a really uh, good time. Um, it was a productive uh, meeting. It was. Um, it was good to see how Seattle uh, is dealing with its issues around gun violence. And I thought it was very creative um, that they start their process at the hospital. Oh, really? Their relationship is at the hospital. And so they're looking for the young people who are coming in, who are coming in frequently. Um, if you come in within that category, then when you leave the hospital, you leave with support. So I thought that was an amazing, amazing uh, way to, to go about doing that. Yeah. You know, um, it, it's crazy. In, in 2018, there were actually 31 shootings in which six of them were fatal. Um, yeah. And that that has steadily increased every year um, other than in 2020, I believe, um, where it was reaching 68. Mm -hmm. That's in 2022. Um, but I mean, we're we've we've surpassed that homicide toll um, with two months left in 2023. It's it's insane. It's insane. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, with everything that happened to Pop, um, you know, we even see it in, in today's society with people in, in the music industry like PNB Rock. You know, unfortunately. You know, and and uh, who was who was the other guy? Takeoff, I believe, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it, it's it's just insane. It's insane that this is all happening. Um, so I'm glad you were able to talk to them, get things going productively, and you know, hopefully we see changes. And it, it takes really a voice, right? And it also takes, uh, like I said, they're they're very creative in their approach. So it really takes coming out, you know, looking outside of the box to do, to really make um, a dent 
to really make a, a change, a valuable change. Because mm -hmm. if we do business as usual, nothing's going to change. Exactly. Right? So we have to really look at what it is we're trying to affect. Right? We're trying to stop our young people from reacting and killing each other. Or we're just trying to have our young people stop killing each other. Right? Because if we're if we're looking to address the reaction, then the reaction, you know, requires some deeper dive into personal, you know, the way we are interpersonal skills and, and intrapersonal skills. So, you know, just it it requires a little bit more internal and deeper look. That's all. Definitely, definitely. And Fabi, do you do you want to speak on that? Um, I just think it's very important, um, even with youth, um, I guess it's hard when, you know, they have a hard upbringing and they don't have the support or they don't have the, you know, like the means and it starts with school, you know, like, cause you go home and you go from home to school and I feel like they don't have the activities or, you know, other things that can support them instead of being out on the streets or making bad choices when they could be investing their time. And I guess that goes along with um, your foundation and keeping that um, kind of opportunity for kids to have. Right, giving them something to do. Right. Um, and in, in that something to do, um, we look at helping them manage how they think and how they process, you know, their environment and things that, that come at them. Um, because you can be busy and still be a hot mess. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if, you're, if your busyness is, is really about doing some self, some self work, then, you know, it's worth it. So you right. can have fun and kind of do the healing stuff at the same time. And so we have to really look at not just keeping them busy, but doing some work where their mindset is yeah. reset. Right. Because so even, you even see uh, mental health struggles like, at a young age as well, not just in adults, but I mean, mental health also plays like a big role, I mm -hmm. would say, in that aspect. And just mental health in the broader sense, right? Mm -hmm. not, not just in the sense of, you know, you're bipolar, you're schizophrenic, but just your mental well-being and, and what are your skills and what are your tools to help you manage your emotional self as the day goes, as you go through the day, you know? So, um, because one of the things that may happen is if we then define mental health or mental wellness as I'm not schizophrenic and I'm not bipolar, then just helping me deal with my anxiety, which may trigger me the wrong way at the wrong time, gets lost in the shuffle, mm -hmm. you know? So we just have to be careful and mindful of what we're trying to do so that we don't overlook something that should be just easily caught. Right. Exactly. So when I reached out, um, you were prepping for, it, it was an event that you guys are having for grieving moms. And obviously you went through that portion of things. Um, I'm going you through some- that, long ago. that was in April. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. All yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. I reached out that long, um, long ago, but I mean, like I said, I've been following the foundation and things that you've been, you know, keeping going on and, and things like that. But, um, you know, obviously you were going through the grieving process and you probably still are, you know, it's not going to go away right away. Um, right now I'm going through some grieving cause I just lost my grandmother, but it's totally two different things than what you're going through. Right. Um, can you talk to us a little bit more about that event and how it's you different, it's present. different but um it doesn't take away from your pain from your wounding um because if your grandmother was near and dear to your heart if she was you know the the oxygen in your blood the wind beneath your wings yeah. They're there together. You know what I'm saying? They're there together because that now you have to figure out how to manage without that. Right. Um, I think one of the things, and I think a lot of times people realize it in the grieving process, but once they quote unquote get over it, they don't go back to trying to fix it, which is, you know, the whole process of how people manage you when you're in that 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 situation or when you're in that moment or that season 
right? We, we try to move people quickly through it as opposed to letting them walk the walk and you really live the process so that when you come to get to the other side, you've really done some work, yeah. you know? I mean, anything can trigger you, but if you've done some work, then hopefully when you're triggered, you've got um, a good place to land, you know, a healthy place, uh, a place that can really speak to and inform your response and your behavior. Um, I tell like when I was going preparing with the people in um, Seattle, I, you know, at some point when they wanted to, to they wanted to do the figuring out how they were going to do it. Right. Was, uh, was I going to be a speaker? Was it going to be an interview? They decided they would do an interview. And then all the questions that came up were um, kind of like about losing him. Mm. And I know it's going to sound crazy, but there's a way to tell this without reliving the story yeah right and i really wasn't interested in reliving it it's happened it, it it's you know it's it's working its way through my life i don't need to relive it exactly but i can share with you where i am what's happened to me since then you want to know some things about him we can do that but one of the things I really was intentional about my weekend with the women is that this was no weekend for you to retell your story. We weren't swapping who was more traumatized. We weren't swapping whose death was more horrific than the other, mm -hmm. right? It was a season for us to get together. And I want to hear, I wanted to encourage the women to tell their stories, which involved or which became a part of the process of losing their child right so you're going to talk about that you're going to talk about how you feel you're going to talk about you can you, you're going to talk about how it, the impact it impacted you when you found out when you when you heard it when you did that all of those things are going to come but we don't want to relive it and just because there's no learning in the relive mm -hmm. right because you're just repeating the past yeah so it's really about trying to figure out who you are who you're becoming in this process. I, one of the things I said to them is that, you know, with my firstborn, Obasi, um, life was about, or his season was about family and faith, right? Because that was a season where everybody was having first. Everybody was having their first babies, their first this. So all of that was the family gathering around the first grand, the first this, the first nieces, the first nephews, all of that, right? But with Shar. I'm learning who I am as a woman, as a person in his shadow, right? I have to, I have to kind of figure out who I am now that I'm no that I'm no longer physically his mother. You know, but he's still here, I can still physically parent him. There are things that I can do for him with him, da, 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 da. But now that Shar isn't here, how do I continue to be his mother? And some say, well, yeah, it's going to be easy for you because you have the foundation. But even if there wasn't a foundation, the question is, how do I continue to be your mother, your aunt, your grandson, now that you're no longer here? Right? And so what did she leave with you that is your responsibility to share with the world? Other than, oh, man, I really love my, my grandma and she's gone. Mm -hmm. What did she deposit in you? that's supposed to feed those that you touch mm. and there's the focus so we're still talking about grandma we're still talking about losing grandma but we're also talking about what we're going to do with the legacy grandma left in you what's left of grandma in you so it's about what's left of Shar in me what am i supposed to do with the light that's left and i think as a culture um we don't look at that. I think there are more other cultures uh, do it a little bit more than, than Western culture. And then the Westernized culture becomes this amalgamation of everybody's, right? Mm -hmm. Because everybody, all the individual pockets in this, this culture probably do things differently. But the bigger picture culture gives you three days off and you better come with a program from the services to say why you were not at work. For three days, you know, you just lost 
I just lost my son. You just lost your grandmother. And you're telling me now that after three days, I am fully functional in society again. There's no way that's possible. Exactly. And then everybody that you're around is stepping on eggshells because they don't know what to say, if mm -hmm. to say, and they're usually saying the wrong thing. So we're not a culture that recognizes that, that this is a process and there are different stages and places of it. You know, the 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 just I, I one of the things I like that I that I discovered is that, you know, in Judaism, when you sit Shiva with someone, right? First of all, the mirrors of the house are covered because you know what, you ain't gotta look good. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you sit with someone, you don't say anything to them until they say something to you. So that takes away this awkwardness of trying to tell him he's in a better place. God takes the good ones young. Shut up. Nobody, nobody, nobody <laughs> in a better place. The better place is here right next to me right now in my side, exactly. by my side. Exactly. So stop that. Mm -hmm. You know? So I think things like those where the, your daily practice, your faith practice, or your cultural practice allows you to live and walk through your grief and not stuff it down. Because that's where you get the psychosis and the stuff that's playing out in the street. Mm -hmm. People have lost things, especially when you're talking about economically challenged communities where people are not getting the, the our young people are young and, and more mature are not getting the emotional support that they need. They're not getting the proper food that they need. They're not getting the proper education that they need. They're not getting the proper exposure that they need to culture and all sorts of things. Yeah, there, there's some stuff going on. There's some stuff going on. And when we when we pop off, you know, the world gets upset and the bad things happen. We take each other's lives. And then so we're the bad guy. Say that again? So then you end up being the bad guy for the consequences you chose. Oh, okay, there you go. There you go. And and just because someone wasn't there to help you kind of acknowledge and process whatever it is you lost. You know, because the grieving process is is the grieving process, whether it's a person or a thing. Or an opportunity that you lost. Definitely. You know, so a lot of our young people are dealing with the loss of not having a father, not knowing their fathers, or not having fathers effectively in their lives, having mothers that maybe because they're so overwhelmed with trying to do all sorts of things. They, you know, you can, your mom is in the house with you, but she might as well not be, right? Because she doesn't have the time to kind of put in all that nurture stuff. That would kind of help you process you before you go out in the street and do something irrational because you don't know how to manage what's going on in you. So yeah, it's it's you know it's still it's still very real for me. And when I you know when I allow myself, because I had another mother who I believe she may be going on a year now. I don't know. I don't think she's reached a year for the loss of her son. And you know, we she says to me, "Yes, I'm in denial. It's a choice. <laughs> I am choosing to not recognize this thing because it's painful. And while you don't want to encourage people to not face what's going on, you know, for the first time, it was like I understand what you're saying. I am choosing to not um, face this thing head on because it hurts. But here are some things I can do." And yes, I'm I'm going to have to come back. I will have to come back to deal with it. But here's some productive things I can do in the meantime that'll strengthen some muscles that I'm going to need when I'm forced to face it. And so it's not this irrational thing or something that you need to be counseled out of. You need to be cautious, you know, be cautious and be cautious. But it's not something that you should be like, you better not. That. No, because there's a muscle that's being strengthened until, I can, until I'm forced to be over here. And when I'm forced to be over here, I'm more than likely stronger than I was when you all were saying or when the world was saying I should have been dealing with it. Right? Because I probably wasn't dealing with it because I knew and God knew there's no way I could deal with that and function. Yeah. And since the idea is that I need to function, because another friend said, you know, if you were gonna if you were gonna leave the planet, you would have left already. So clearly you were meant to survive. So now what? Right? 
So mm-hmm. even that. Gotcha. I'm sorry, I'm ranting. Oh no, you're fine. No, I'm I'm listening. I'm taking it all in, and and you're you're a thousand percent right. You know, I uh, I was beating myself up for a while, just like man, you know, like this is this this isn't fair, you know. But like, you're right. You know, what did my grandma instill in me? And you know, I gotta I gotta utilize that right, and and put forth that to everybody else that you know is needing help or needing some kind of guidance. So, what that this is a fair place. That's real too, oh, yeah. because it's not fair. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. And you're allowed that. You are allowed that. It's not fair to you. That's where you are. That's what you're sitting in. It's yeah. not fair. And why is it not fair? And go through all the reasons why it's not fair. But in the midst of it being not fair, there's some things you can do as well. Right. Definitely. And that that kind of helps you balance the 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 loss because there's this other thing over here that's more substantial that kind that keeps her alive that you can hold on to. Exactly. Right? So there's there's a healthiness in the doing of the expanding of the legacy, right? But there's also you you've got to be able to say it's not fair. Like if you're if you, the relationship. <laughs> If God is God, he can take your, I don't understand what you're doing. You did this, 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 and this, and you couldn't do this? Mm-hmm. Come on now, talk to me. Mm-hmm. But we're not allowed to, the, our culture says we don't talk to God like that. Mm-hmm. My my book says you go boldly before the throne. And mm-hmm. bold means, you know, you come with, you come with your game. <laughs> <laughs> you come with your game. So, you know. For sure. Um, so when it comes to like the the um, group that you have for for the ladies, the moms that are dealing with grieving, is it an in person only thing? Have you guys expanded out to like a Zoom? So like, if anybody that does find this episode, they they can potentially participate in the future. Because I know you guys are over in New York, the East Coast. We're over here in the West Coast. So mm-hmm. you know, I, I think it, it's a great thing that you guys have going on. Well, we're building. So that was the. It was the second, but the first one that looked like what I wanted to look like. Okay. Right. Um, and so I, 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 I am intentional about keeping the women together. So we did meet by Zoom. Um, after that, just to kind of just to keep them in the, um, just to keep them together. But one of the things that we've done is that we've become a support system. So while we may not be meeting monthly on Zoom or quarterly on Zoom, if anybody has anything going on in their lives, they're sending out the flyer, they're sending out the invitation, they're making that phone call. So we're still connected. But what you're talking about, I'm working on. Okay. Okay. No, it's a great thing that you have going on. And I, I could tell that you have a, you know, a, a passion for it. You know, it's something that you really want to be there for for others. So yes, and I think a <laughs> You're giving me work to do is what you're trying to do. <laughs> Stop it, sir. <laughs> you got it. Um, but yes, I mean, to build it so that it, 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 it is a platform where women can come together and that, that they know um, that this thing is coming and they can participate and that there's a place for them. Um, that's something we're really actively thinking about um, in our board meetings to try to, there's a gap there somewhere. Because, you know, when women go to these conferences, that empowers them and just gives them and just gives them all this rev to go when they come home you know they need they need a place to process all that stuff that they were given over the weekend and that does require kind of staying in touch with each other um and or finding another place where you can get your next steps right it's like having the kind of segue into other things. It's like there's a program that we're dealing with um that we're a part of um where the people are uh, the young the young people ages 11 through 19 they've um you know committed some they're in the legal system and so the Jews um and what's the what's the system I'm talking about it's not the what do they what do they call what's the word for it they're in the juvenile justice system there you mm-hmm. go and so instead of sending them to do hard time at Rikers they get an opportunity to go to a home environment, right? They're there for um, six months. 
and then they go back home to their environment for six months, but they're still in the program, right? So all the services and the support that we're getting on site for the first six months are still available to them at home from the same group of people, right? So something similar to that for the, the, the mothers is, you know, what we're working on. So when you come to, um, you know, Love, Loss, and Legacy, when you leave Love, Loss, Love, Loss, and Legacy, there's still work for you to do. There's still people that you can interact with that'll help you process and, and build your vision. You know, because one of the things I encouraged the women to do was to identify what the one thing they would do to keep their child, uh, to keep that legacy, to keep that thing that was left in them, that light, uh, to keep that alive, to share that with the world. And well, I remember one mother saying that her daughter um, really loved oxtails. And I was like, then so once a month, girl, have an oxtail party. I know I'm coming because <laughs> I love a piece of oxtails, right? Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as that. I know mm -hmm. another mother who um, she didn't do it, but she the uh, a, the friend of her son, and the the, uh, the young man would coordinate uh, a day in the park, you know, a picnic in the park, a barbecue in the park, in celebration of the life and spirit of his friend, and it really was an annual thing because he was intentional about remembering his friend. Now, what would happen if in public housing, where a lot of this stuff is happening, right? If all the young people who were who were forced out of here un untimely were remembered quarterly, monthly, annually, that would set up a different environment in the place that you live because we're always remembering, you know, Quan. And so the next time you do something, you might be thinking about doing something where you can hear over here a celebration of somebody else. And it may make you think twice about doing something rash. Right? If you're constantly seeing the celebration of people who've been taken from us, it sets up something in the back of your brain right. as to how you should conduct yourself when you're angry or when you're hurt and it turns to anger because you don't know what else to do. So I hope that answered your question. No, it did. It did actually. Um, very much so. So, um, but yeah, so I definitely want to pass it over to Fabi and just let her, her chat with you a little bit. I know she has questions as well. She, she's a huge pop fan. So. I'm a listener. I'm, I'm taking everything all in. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I really like uh, the part you said about grieving because like as the girlfriend, I'm on the other side mm -hmm. of it. So just um, trying to say the right things and trying to find the say the right things. It's the support. Okay. Yeah, it's the support. So I'm like, I'm on that side of things. So like, mm -hmm. As a person of support, what is some good advice that you have, like for anybody that's dealing with grief? Don't say anything. A ministry of silence. Be there. Sit with them. When he's ready to talk, he'll say something to you. He may not say something to you, but he may reach and hold your hand in a moment when something hits his gut. He may move a little closer to you when he's trying to manage something and it's kind of not going away as fast as he needs it to go away. And maybe every now and then just say, I'm here. Don't try to fix it because you can't. Right. There's you can't, there's nothing you can do besides be present for him. That's gonna make this thing move any faster than it than it can. He just needs to know that you're there. And that if he needs to talk, he can talk. And if he doesn't feel like talking, that's okay too. Because I know we want to fix it. We want to fix it. We don't want him to be in pain. Let me take this away from you. Never, never. But the best thing you can do for him is just kind of sit with him. And, and if he wants to do, you know, for like for me, it's about just kind of keep moving. 
So I have friends who just kind of help me think through things and create things and do things. And that's helpful to me. And if he, you know, if, if the, the thought pops up or the, the feelings pop up or something come up, I say it in the moment. I'm allowed to say it in the moment. And I'm allowed to pretend like I didn't say it also after I finished saying it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just just be present and, and read the room and don't don't try to fix it because you can't. And if you could fix it, you would be robbing him of his growth. Because mm -hmm. he's got to go through this to come out on the other side somehow different. Yeah. Right? Because it it's a horrible, horrible thing to lose someone you love. But if you lose them and the process doesn't grow you in a positive way, you've lost twice. Mm -hmm. You've lost twice. So just kind of, you know, sit shiver. <laughs> Don't say anything until he says something, you know. That's so hard for me because I'm like, talk to me now, tell me now, like, what can I do? And I'm always like, and I tease them for this, like in general, I'm like, mm -hmm. talk to me, tell me something. Don't just look at me like, is it good? Is it not good? Like, what can I do? And he's like, just stop. He's like, you're pressure, you're pressure. And I'm like, okay, I know. But like, it's so hard for me not to just like sit there and like, I'm like, I know what he wants to tell me, but it's like, I want him to tell me mm -hmm. instead of just looking at each other. So I'm like, well, think, now, do you think it'll be beneficial for him to share it with you? Or is it just your need for him to tell you? Because if it's beneficial for him to get it out <clears throat> and he's okay with talking about it, you could possibly lead the, the, the conversation. Right? Instead of saying, well, tell me about it. You can, you know, is is it, are you remembering something? You know, just, just kind of ask one or two questions. And when he says stop, then stop. But I think it's also, you know, uh, learning how to ask the question. Mm -hmm. If we need him to talk, it's learning how to ask the question so he can kind of push open the pain door. He can push open the dis-ease or discomfort door and kind of look out and say, it's this thing. And just kind of stand in the doorway. Mm -hmm. And you're not rushing to come in. Duh, 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 duh. You're just going to stand there with him and, you know, figure it out step by step, piece by piece. Yeah. Because a lot of that is us wanting, we're, we're sitting in anxiety and angst around them not talking because we're feeling what we think they feel and we're working on their anxiety. And that's us. Yeah. Fine. You're all anxious about not being able to help him. And he'd be like, chick, just, just stand there. That's all I need. <laughs> You're here. That's amazing for me. You know? Yeah. So just, just be present. And then if you, and then figure out how to ask a question that'll make, that'll allow him to kind of open, open up, that'll allow him to answer it. You know? Um, like how you doing right now? As opposed to you having a good day, you having a bad day? How do you feel right now? What's going on right this minute? Oh, right? Yeah. That's yeah. always my go-to question too. Like, uh, and like I, I recently I asked him like, "Oh, did you cry today?" And like it wasn't like me trying to like be like not in a in a rude way, but it was more like I like that though. Like, I'm I like, like that. I say, and I'm like, and I, and the way I say, it, I didn't want it to come off like, like, oh my gosh, like, why is she asking me that? But I'm like, did you cry today? Cause I'm like, like, my mom always tells me, like, if you feel any kind of way, if you, and you can't say it, she's like, cry. She's like, yell. She's like, do what makes you feel better to release all those feelings you have because words are not enough to say how you're feeling. You know what that reminds me of? And it, it really is the same concept, right? You know how they, you, when you, you, the kids go to school or, or when you went to school and you came home, somebody said, did you have a good day today? And you're like, mm -hmm. what did you do today? Uh -huh. <laughs> but if you said, did you jump today? Like when you have the little ones, right? When you have the little ones, you can say, did you jump today? 
Did you clap your hands today? Did you sing today? Because then they're going to tell you that they sang Itsy Bitsy Spider and they did the hand thing and we had to do Jumping Jacks in gym. So I think, did you cry today? Depending on whatever tone you use could be like an amazing uh, conversation starter. And did you cry today? Could mean I'm just checking on you. Did you allow yourself? Did you give yourself room to feel today? Yeah. It could be, did you cry today? Meaning, did you deal with any of those things that I know that's on your heart that you can't share with me right now? Did you try to deal with any of those things today? Mm -hmm. You know, it could, depending on the, your tone and, and how you say it, it could, it could be a great conversation starter. So I like that. Just, you know, did you cry today? Did you smile today? Did you laugh today? Mm -hmm. Did you remember her and laugh today? Did you remember her and smile today? Did yes. you remembering her make you sad today? All the time. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, like that you can get an answer. See, all the time. Yeah. I wasn't even talking to him. Right, so I would say it's safe to assume, right? You're keeping, you know, um, Pop Smokes or Bashar's legacy going um, mm -hmm. still to this day with the foundation. I mean, right. we've had Pop Smoke Day. We had Pop Smoke Week where you guys did. It's a, it's a festival, y'all. <laughs> it's a festival week. We run because, you know, each day, you know how your your, your birthday goes down the week. Um, and because next year is a leap year, it actually leaps to Saturday. So that's going to be a beast to try to figure, you know, try to figure out being in the park on a Saturday. Oh, but, yeah. you know, um, we have a series of events that leads up to the day in the park. And I've seen that. I mean, you guys had the the giveaway for for um, food, you know, you yep. had the harvest. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what kicked it all off. You guys had the Met Gala. Um, the that fashion the show, day, yeah. but yeah. you know what? Okay, so we have the um the first the opening, and we may switch it again um next year because normally we open up like on the Sunday of that week, mm -hmm. um with the food uh with the harvest, but this year we couldn't because of the weather, and so we ended up giving it giving the food away at the park, and we just we we just literally went into the streets and just you know if they would stop. <laughs> We handed it to them. So that was kind of fun. So we may, you know, fold that into the day itself. But we, you know, we do the food giveaway. Then the, the Monday, we do a, um, a youth summit. Okay. We do a youth summit. Then we do, we added the gala this year, which is our fashion piece. And last year we added a basketball tournament. So that this year was our second year with the basketball tournament. And then, you know, the day in the park with all the vendors and the, uh, basketball and all that kind of stuff. No, it's a basketball clinic. <clears throat> the basketball clinic during the week and then the tournaments on the day in the park. Okay. Okay. And he loved basketball, right? I mean that was Absolutely. like Absolutely. Okay. He played did you ever, there. Yeah. Did you ever watch the movie Boogie? I you know we had a private screening. Oh okay. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> we you know we were allowed to like have some friends come, you know, so I think there was like maybe twenty of us or so maybe. Okay. And they've got a theater in New Jersey, I think we went and we saw it. it was nice. It was nice. No, we loved it. I mean, we loved it. We uh, you know, when we seen that he was in it, we were like, she's like, we have to watch this movie. And I'm like, why? And she was like, Well, Pop Smoke's in it. And I'm like, okay, let's let's do it, you know. And I mean, I just loved it, you know. I mean, he just he he seemed like he could have been an actor, right? I mean, he had the voice, he could have definitely played some good roles. Well, you know the thing is because um I uh, we um uh, what I say is that we um we go to or we went to or they were raised in a performing arts church, right? So theater comes naturally to them, you know, the stage, the dancing, the singing, the, all of that comes naturally to them. So um, the 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 running joke in the theater with us was that <laughs> they didn't write a script for him. They just kind of said, "Yo, this is a situation," and they let him run with it because everybody was like, "Yeah, that, yeah, that sounds like him. Yeah, that's what he would say." <laughs> See, I went to, um, I went out to New York um, two summers ago, and I, I made it a thing because I know Fabi really wanted to go to the, you know, the grave site, and she wanted to go to the mural, and I made sure I went to both. I, you know, unfortunately, all the damage that was done, um, 
you know, they, there wasn't anything there besides a blank, you know, slap. But I mean, it's oh, just. Oh, so you guys, okay, so you all came. Was it okay? Was it before they tried to get in or after they tried to get in? I think it was after because I I did yeah. see I did see the footages and stuff of all of the the cleanup and stuff yeah, yeah. and and yeah. whatnot. But I, I got out there. I, I told my friend because he's a he's an old school hip hop head and so am I, right? But I was like, you don't understand. Like you like Fifty Cent. This man has the same voice. Like you know, it's just deeper and just more raw talent and. Yeah, I told him we have to go, man. I was like, you know, let's go to Canarsie. I, I need to go check out the mural. We could go see Biggie's mural anytime, but I, I, I need to go here, you know, like I have to go. And so we went and I was just like, man, it's insane. It's insane. But yeah, it's uh it, it was a it was a good time. It was definitely a good time. I mean, you know, I just it just feels um kind of strange when when people say that to me that they're coming to New York just to do that or they're coming to New York and they must you know <laughs> yeah. come to 80th and Flatland <laughs> yeah I, I told her I said you need to go out there she's like ah you know you overhyped New York I'm like no you don't understand it's, <laughs> it's, it's underrated it's so underrated the food the people I mean I met nothing but amazing people out there it's just the vibe all in all I just yeah. Yeah. it's it's a good time it's a good time but you hear a lot of people tell you that they go out there for him, huh? Yeah, it's yeah, yes, absolutely. I mean, a matter of fact, there was another set of um, fans uh, that they had twin boys, and they named their boys his first name and his middle name. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> That's so How when they feel? came to New York, uh, I made a point of going to meet them by go. the bureau. Uh, <laughs> there you go. The one over by the what is it? The ninety nine cent store. Yes. Okay. 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 Cents. And then okay, the other one is by the supermarket. Yeah. 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 I guess the, the one is 80th and one is I don't know what the other street is, but I know the one is on the side of the store. Is that the one you went to? Yes. That that okay. one that was right there in that that nice oh, well I'd say nice neighborhood because it looks nice compared to some of the places we have out here but um yeah no that <laughs> one that one <laughs> can I see is not the hood I don't care what anybody's trying to say it is just not the hood. yeah it, it, it's it looks well, really can't nice. say that to the world because you know pop smoke grew up in the hood I'm sorry exactly exactly <laughs> so I definitely want to pass it to Fabi because I I mean. You know, yeah, this... Pat, we were talking and he, you know, see how, <laughs> and you see how he just kind of responded. Yeah. And it was just us talking. Yeah. Because it opened him up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it works. Yeah. It works. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it is, I mean, even for, I, I just, I mean, because I, I dealt with it, like, uh, I want to say it's going on. Three years, uh, my grandparents died within a couple days of each other. So um, it was first my grandma, then my grandpa. But um, since they lived in, they live in a different country, um, my parents got to go and I stayed back. Okay. And it was like the, I took like the three days off work. And then I went back and they're like, oh we're sorry you know sorry for your loss blah blah blah. like we're so glad you we were back at work and I'm like it's not what I want to hear you know I don't really want to hear like you're, you're glad at work like if it was for me like I wouldn't be at work right so you know, it was kind of like in that time I kind of just shut my emotions out like yes I cried um when it happened and then um last summer Last summer or the summer before, I went out there and I saw their um their gravesite, their headstones and everything. And um I think that's when it hit me all at once because it was like a surreal moment because I had shut my feelings out yep. for so long. And then when um they were my dad's parents, so obviously he went he went and he's still going through it. Like you said, like it's it's seasons for people, you know? Um, and so when I went to the gravesite, it hit me all at once. And I'm like, you know, and I, and I got to see them 
I want to say like two summers before that or a summer before that and I got to see them and then when I saw them there it just didn't feel real to me but all the emotions I had like they just came in at once and then when Adam was dealing with everything with his grandma you know I'm like obviously like we've been together for a long time so her going through me seeing it like every kind of just step of the way that happened like as you know as fast as she declined I was there like kind of every step of the way so like every single day that I saw it like with my own eyes and then him going through it it kind of just brought out back more of the emotions that I had put away Mm -hmm. yeah because I didn't see that like when it happened to me but then when I had like a first like look at it I guess like while he was dealing with it it was just like emotion after emotion after emotion but I'm like I don't but I didn't want it to take away from how he felt because whether or not like she was my blood like she still was an important person for me but I didn't want to take it away from him you know like make it seem like I was making the situation about myself so I think that just I've been learning myself in that time yes and just kind of like dealing helping him deal with what he went through, but also healing myself in the Mm -hmm. process and just dealing with like everything Mm -hmm. all at once, I think has been, has been a tough, it's, it's been tough. I'll tell you, it hasn't, it's not easy. And I feel like I'm still learning. And even when I ask him questions and, you know, like when I, have you cried? (laughs) I'm like, have I cried? Have I cried today? Have I let my emotions out? And I'm like, but I'm, I'm always like, I think we always try to find like the right words to tell people, but we never have the right words to tell people. No right words, Fab. Like, and I think that's one of the levels of consciousness that I'm, I'm allowing myself to accept. Like, you know, so when my friends, I see people post on, um, on social media that so-and-so have passed. And everybody's in my condolences, you know, the, 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 sorry for your loss. And I try to find something that'll speak to the moment and give them some sort of directive or some sort of immediate acknowledgement of where they are in that moment. Because all these, you know, I'm sorry for your loss. I'm sorry for you. That doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. I had one of my former students <clears throat> Apparently, she lost like three members of her family in one situation. So it must have been an accident in all three paths. And sorry for your loss to me. <laughs> what does that mean? It's generic. <laughs> so all I could think to say to her was breathe. Because that's truly probably where she is, right? Trying to catch her breath. That not just one, not just two, but three. Mm -hmm. Breathe, baby, breathe. That's 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 all I need to remind you of right now. Inhale, exhale. Sorry for your loss. Means you're moving on. You haven't put positive anything in me. That's gonna help me get through this moment. You're just going. Sorry, babe. And then you out. That doesn't mean anything. You haven't left me with anything that's going to help me get through that moment. And I think that's what we need to learn. You're trying to say something that will sustain them in that moment or sustain them for the next few moments. So you need to be very conscious of what the words are. It means it, those words have to have value. They can't just be, you know, platitudes. Mm-hmm. When they were invented, they were good. They're not good anymore. You need to, you, you know, either say something that will speak into their lives in that moment or don't say anything. Hold their hands. If, they, if they're in a place where they can receive a touch, touch them somehow. Or just sit there. Yeah. Anything I can do for you right now? No. Nah. Well, know that I'm here. 
That's better than he's in a better place. Sorry for your loss. But we don't want to say anything I can do for you because if they need something, then you got to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That part. <laughs> So yeah, but it's just it's just again, and and what's and I what I'm hearing with you, Fab, too, is that you had to relive your loss because you didn't deal with your loss when it was your season, right? Right? You weren't able to, or for whatever reason, you chose to stay here and not go. It took you three days, and you know you did the big picture, the, the picture thing. Mm -hmm. But now that it's not just it's not that it's his, it's his season that it's Adam's season, and you've got to comfort him. You've got to walk with him. Now all the stuff that you would have been feeling if you had been given the time, all of that's coming up, mm -hmm. and now you have to manage that and manage him. Well, now is that something? Sure. As if you. Uh, but if you were allowed to kind of just sit in it for a season when it was your turn, it would have made his now this now different for you and him. So some of your panic probably is you're needing to, you're like, I would want to talk if I was this I was having this moment. So I'm like, he must want to talk. If he's this Come on, talk, Adam, talk, talk. I would want to talk. You gotta talk. See, and for her, though, I, I understand why she was doing all that is because I don't share my feelings. Like, that's just one thing I've always, you know, just never been good at is sharing my feelings. So I think she really wanted to just know, like, how how are you feeling? You know, because she she had never seen me cry really until that moment. And uh, that's when it hit me was like, OK, like my grandma's in a veg vegetative state now. You know, it's like. You know, or my grandma's talking, hey, I, I'm dying. It, my time is up, you know, and she's actually having those words with us. You know, I'm like, okay. yikes, like, yeah, she's just talking. But like, no, like the next day they found her in a vegetative state. It's like, what? Mm. You know, like doctor says, oh, she has 24 to 48 hours and she didn't even last the 24 hours. You know, so I think she just she wanted to know how I was feeling so she could be there, you know. And oh no, I wasn't knocking her. <laughs> oh no, I know, I know. <laughs> but it, it, because all of this is going on for her at the same time, it was almost probably like she Sometimes. needed to talk. Yeah. And she wanted she wanted you to have your space to talk, but she needed yeah. to talk too. So how sure. we balance the two things, right? For sure. <laughs> so yeah. You know, and so that's why it's important that you walk through it, yeah. right? That you don't stifle yours and you don't stifle yours. This gives you the, the time to kind of grow as a couple and grow as human beings right. through this process. Definitely. Agree. Yeah. So, but yeah, no, um, let's let's change it up a let's little do bit. Happy <laughs> <laughs> um so when when was it that you you first like started like when when was it that you guys figured out really that Bashar was going to be like a musician you know a rapper like when when did you guys discover it just hit I I am I am musically inclined so in okay. the sense that you know I was the person in high school who was in all the the high school plays mm -hmm. you know I was in band I was in choir yeah I, that was me right so my children um are raised with music so if they, I mean, it's only natural that they would do something with it, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you're talking about, you know, children who go to church, a good Baptist kid can play the drum, the piano, and the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> and that's without lessons, right? <laughs> so um, I wasn't not expecting it, mm -hmm. you know? The, 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 the eye-opener for me was that he was as worldwide mm -hmm. as he is. Right? Because I understood, okay, he's, you know, he's got his little come up and, you know, something's <laughs> going on for him in New York. I did not. It, I couldn't. It, this? No. I, I didn't. My brain didn't work that way. Yeah. You know, and how brain, quickly it grew. Like how. I mean. He was already established by the time I found out. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
he had just started doing this thing and his impact is as if he had been doing it for years that's that's huge yes that's a big leap yeah that's a big leap that i'm here on this podcast with you exactly testament to how big a space that was from where most people would have been just starting their career as musicians or artists and where he actually was at the beginning. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot. See, and like one thing for me when it comes to like music nowadays, like I said, I'm an old head, you know, I love the old school hip hops, you know, like the Wu-Tangs, Ghostface Killers, you know, uh, Heavy D. Um, and I explained to Fabi, I hate when people sample music. I, ju I just hate when they do it. But even my favorites, like J. Cole does it. And um, but when I heard, you know, when I heard, you know, Pop's music, I was like, why is this guy sampling, you know? But then after giving some time and listening to it, she's like, yeah, I told you. I told you something. <laughs> I'm like, you don't, like, Thank I love that music. <laughs> Welcome. And I told you so many times. And I, till this day, I tell, tell, I still tell him, I said, I told you so. <laughs> and I give her credit. I'm just like, man, why didn't I not, like, fully listen to this? You know, I love music that gets me pumped up and, mm -hmm. and hyped up. And I'm just like, man. Yeah, this is amazing and, and it got to the point because my, my buddy he does beats and stuff you know he has his you know his pacific northwest type of music and i asked him i was like dude like we need more pop smoke music can you take some like lyrics or like things and kind of put it over your music and he did and i was like this is amazing you know but it, it doesn't it, it's it's not another album right mm -hmm. you know we we need another album and well, we may never. Look, we may I don't never. know. The thing is that they're saying that you know we have everything that he's done, but possibly not. So you know, we, we just. I'm just staying open, and I'm not. For sure. You're not I'm saying not nothing yet. Hmm? I say you're not really saying yes or no. You're not <laughs> confirming or denying. Because I've got to find out. You know, I mean, <laughs> yeah. this person comes that like you know, you know, he was in the studio with me. He gave me this. He was in the studio with a lot of people, and he gave him that. So you know, it's it's got to kind of settle out, and people the you know people got to. Whatever it is they do with what they do. And yes. I'll be right here waiting. That's exactly. timing. Just like us. Just like us. <laughs> Just right here waiting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we definitely, we do need more music. And if anybody has music out there with them, uh, just let's get it out there. You know, we, we need it. <laughs> um, I know 50, 50 was big on hoping and, you know, but producing that last album, did you ever get to, work with 50 on any of that you know get to talk well, that about. a lot of that was kind of done you know in the studio on that side of town that, that didn't really i mean yeah, i got just, to listen to stuff and you know at the end and stuff like that but that work was just really kind of without me gotcha gotcha you have a favorite song it is difficult for me to listen to any of it mm -hmm. So there are things that I pull, like Tell the Vision is the name of the program in yeah. the um, in the Close to Home program. Um, you know, I, I always find myself saying, welcome to the party. You yeah. know, so there are little clips of things, like, you know, okay. yeah. I'm quick to say, lower your tone. <laughs> <laughs> you know there you go. So, but, you know, um, I really haven't, I think I liked, well, demeanor, because I the, the, the gala was demeanor, yeah. and I think... Yeah. Because demeanor woke me up at three o'clock in the morning, you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> that I think that that's why I, that kind of stuck in my, you know, stayed in my spirit. Um, but you know, piece by piece, I'll listen. I don't know that I have a favorite. I think the ones that click for me are the ones that click for most people. The ones that are the most popular. Right. Um, but I haven't been able to listen the way you need to listen yeah. to have a favorite. You know, because it's still. It's still hard for me. It's yeah, still hard for me. Is that a is that a painting in the background that somebody did for you, or is that yeah, that was um that was a gift to me. That was a gift to me. I, that um that same year, like right around during that season, that you know he had passed. Yummy gave me that. She had that done for me. Okay. Okay. Do you get a lot of like fan like letters and artwork or stuff like that? artwork yes um the emails and sometimes you don't know what to do right 
Because, yeah. I mean, people are really giving you their best and the stuff is good, but like, what? Like, I'm running, like, I think I need, I keep saying like, right? I need a space where I can then accept stuff and have somewhere to put it. You know what I'm saying? What um, you can also do is even auction it, you know, for the foundation um, and, and shout out those those folks that are doing the art and that'll bring them obviously some attention too. That's a, thank you so much for that. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> common sense as that is, I had not thought about that. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, because... All my phones, where am I going to put it? <laughs> put it anywhere. Auction the darn thing. No, I mean, it's an amazing piece. Um, I, I wouldn't even imagine that that was drawn or, or even painted. It looks... I think it was the process that they did. It's beautiful because it's also kind of uh, three-dimensional. Like, you can see his earrings. Oh, wow. You know, you can see the, um, the, the, the chain really kind of glistens as if, you know. And again, I... <laughs> You know, I can look, but I can't look. And I've really just begun to kind of hold his gaze. Mm. In particular with that one, it just seems like he follow, his eyes follow me. Mm. So like even when I come in sometimes in the morning and I'm like, I'm not looking. I'm, I'm just not looking. I'm not looking. You know, I have to make myself look, you know, so. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, still kind of difficult. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, we're we're feeling it. I mean, it's. Getting ready to be four years now, but you know. And so it's crazy. Fab like you and your grandmother, right? I have kept myself busy. Not only have I kept myself busy, I had to be busy because all of a sudden, you know, in his passing, there was this business that I needed to take care of. There was this business that he had become, yeah. right? So the first year was the crazy business. The second year was trying to make something. Uh, and then the third year is when you're kind of somewhat breathing. Um, and so this is when some of the stuff is hitting me. Mm. So I've had moments this year that felt like February 2020. You know, it's so, it's, but again, because I've been building certain other muscles, I can kind of deal with it. You know, it's a place where it shouldn't take me out completely. Like I can recover. Right. You know. So. Definitely. No, well, we definitely appreciate you, you know, taking time to, to chat with us, you know, some fans. And obviously, you know, we want to support the foundation any way we can and, and bring more awareness, especially for fans of Pop Smoke um, and, and Bashar, you're right. Um, so I do want to end it out and um, really just ask how can our viewers contribute, you know, whether they're in New York or, you know, in the Midwest or the even the West Coast, wherever our viewers are listening from, how can they, you know, get back? We know the Shoot for Stars Foundation, we have, a, we have um, an area there where you can financially contribute. But the other piece, too, is just, you know, um, follow us. So that you know when events are coming up and then if it's something that you can be there virtually or be there in, or in person, come through. Definitely. You know, but definitely follow us and just, you know, again, go to the website, Shoot for the Stars Foundation and, you know, make your donation. I have some people, it's really, there are people who have consistently just don't do five, their $5 a month. Okay. And that, I, I am just so touched by that. Yeah. Because that says to me that it means something to you, you know. It's 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 that widow's might. It's that you know my little my middle at my last little. So I'm not gonna have a latte. I'm gonna send that to pop's people. You know, yeah. that's really powerful for me. That's really powerful. Definitely, definitely. Well, we'll definitely have to make it out for a pop smoke event. You know, and yeah, you know, well, introduce ourselves. Chatting, I will make sure <laughs> that you. I'll definitely be out there. Huh? <laughs> But I'll definitely got to go out there now. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely make sure to, we'll, we'll get out there eventually and we'll have to introduce ourselves. Oh, you can help us stream an event or something. I mean, there's a there lot of collaborate. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Well, we'll definitely be in touch. And uh, I, I think, you know, we have you on Instagram. We obviously have our contact infos and, and things like that. And yeah, we definitely are. We're really happy that we got to do this and chat with you. It was it was I'm great. Glad you were able to. This was fun. 
It was fun. Uh, Sometimes I dread when people approach me. Um, and so that's that was probably a part of my delay. Yeah. But I'm not sure that I've got the bandwidth to do this. Yeah. You well, know? we don't want to treat it like we're fanboying or fangirling out because obviously you have, you know, you, you have things that you're dealing with, you know, you have your emotions and feelings. You're a businesswoman, you know, you're, you're a mother still, you know, like, yeah, right? you, exactly. You're still taking care of things and, and, right. you know, it's, it's a process. And now I could say I'm dealing with things I'm, I've, I've been having to deal with, you know, and Fabi's dealt with the things that she's having to deal with too, you know? So, you know, we don't, we don't want to treat this as like, Hey, you know, you're just, somebody to talk to for for clout you know we we actually genuinely really wanted to do this and chat with you about everything so i appreciate that and thank you for yes. making me feel comfortable and thank you for uh, creating a process that made it possible for me to just kind of just flow and share and exactly be myself exactly exactly well perfect well we'll definitely stay in touch and uh you know you obviously have our info you could reach out anytime as well Awesome. I'm definitely going to do that. Sounds good. <laughs> Have a great rest of the day. You too. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Archives with Adam and Fab. Be sure to follow us on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcast. And most importantly, thank you so much for your continued support. We're having a lot of fun making these episodes and we hope you guys are enjoying them as well. Stay tuned. We have a lot more exciting content for you guys coming soon.